can't park in the parking lot. God is good. Is that not good? Pat, there you are, guys. Good to see you. The Browns are here with us today. Good to see you. In from Minnesota. All right. Good to have you guys. Um, just a couple announcements this morning. First of all, if you're a guest, and we do have some guests here in the front. We're so glad you guys came to worship with us. Uh, we do extend a very warm welcome to you. And pray and trust as you worship with us. You'll be drawn closer to the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, closer to us as a church family and a community of faith. And we just uh, thank you for coming, even when the parking lot isn't available. Um, so our attendance is a little smaller today. Obviously, 
Um, everybody's into hiking in this group, so that's good. Uh, we had no problems. Just a couple of announcements. One, we want to thank uh, Vicki Ramirez, who's not here this morning. She's celebrating their 15th anniversary. Is that right? Do we know? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> their 15th anniversary. So she and uh, Antonio aren't here. And Andon. Andon's here, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, but um, she set it all up for us to go to an uh, Ogden Raptors game. And we had a wonderful time on Friday night. A little toasty, but we had a great time. And so glad for everybody who went. Do have a couple announcements. Um, Dwayne Kaiser asked me to announce this. That uh, a little girl, 13-year-old Drew Spaulding, uh, died yesterday of cancer. And he asked that we pray for her parents. She went to the school that Ashley teaches at. So uh, daughter of Amy and Mark. So you remember the Spaulding family to pray for them this week. I can't imagine that. Uh, that just seems like the hardest thing on the planet to me to have to bury a child. So anyhow, also another announcement would be that Sandy Isaacson is back in the hospital. We talked last night. I'm going to go see her right after worship today. Um, she's, her heart's out of whack still. She's probably going to have an ablation uh, Monday or Tuesday and a pacemaker put in. So uh, Sandy gave me permission to say that. And she's hanging in there. But she's... Uh, uh, you know, this has been a long haul for her, a big, a long process. So anyhow, lift Sandy up and uh, Larry up in your prayers also. Um, ladies of OSLC are having a brunch next uh, Saturday morning at uh, Black Bear Diner in Ogden. Don't forget that. And our annual school supply drive, um, that will run to August 6th. And there's a basket in the back of the church. Are there any other announcements that need to be made this morning? Yes, I see that hand. Don. I know it's hard to think about Christmas with the heart. Uh, but I got a notification the other day about the wreaths that we, that we always have and stuff like that. I should be getting the information probably right around the first of, you know, in the middle of August and like that. We'll start, we'll start selling and stuff like that. Um, and we're going to sell probably from September 1st until... About the 29th of October, because I got everything back then in by the 1st of November. But we'll be set up back here, so if anybody's interested in it, please know. Basically, as we uh, use it and we, uh, the money that we make is into the enhancement fund. And the enhancement funds like what we do to buy TVs, things like that. So just let me know that it's coming and we should be ready to go. Great. Thank you. I was thinking you were standing up to tell us when the first Steelers game was, but anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've already said, check the schedule. <laughs> I know when I go to Denver to watch the Pirates. <laughs> Sheila, did you have an announcement you wanted to make? I just remind the parents again, and it's in the bulletin for uh, Akalani. Please go in the back, those who want to, and can. And then, uh, not September, August 20th, I'll have a meeting here with all new compliments. And students who still want to do acolyting for the church. And it, that's also in your bulletin. But I just thought to remind you because I leave September 11th and I won't be back till late October uh, to be gone with my niece in Europe. So um, please keep an eye on the bulletin. Think about it. I uh, appreciate you very much. We're going to actually have a training class and everything. And parents are welcome to come and participate in that. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Let's all stand for our call to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. We gather this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us take a brief moment and ask the Holy Spirit to show us where we fall short of God's standard of holiness. Confess those sins and receive the forgiveness that we have in the shed blood of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. <clears throat> we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. from the Old Testament. It's from prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 10 through 13. Hear the word of the Lord. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorns shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall make a name for the Lord. An everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Be and our gospel reading this morning is from Matthew's gospel, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 9 and 18 through 23. It's the parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Great crowds gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path. And the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up since they had no depth of soil. 
But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. That is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> Seems there were three professionals sitting around arguing about which profession God created first. Doctor says, well, the Bible says that God took a rib out of Adam to make woman. So it's clearly this was surgery. God started with medicine and doctors. Engineer shakes his head and replies, no, no. The Bible also says that God created the world out of void and chaos. To do that, God surely must have been an engineer. Therefore, engineering is where God started. Politician smiles smugly, leans discreetly forward. Ah, he says, but who do you think created the chaos? <laughs> One thing I like about my dad, this is not a Father's Day sermon, but I got my dad in here a little bit. Uh, Al Grants was that he had a love for learning. He was the second son of a German immigrant. My grandfather, Bruno, who came across and uh, came in through New York Harbor. My dad was born in 1927, two years before the Great Depression. Didn't do well in school. Said the military straightened him out. I'm glad it did. Uh, he sent me a box of books when I was in North Dakota. Boxes of books when I was in North Dakota. Everything from Eckhart Tolle and How to Have Peace and the books about the Gnostic Gospels. The guy read everything, two books a week. But one book my dad never told me that he read much of was the Bible. I never saw him reading it either. Well, we had a family Bible. But in his defense, Catholics were told that only the priest could interpret the Bible. So he never really opened it. And, uh, but guess what? Most sold book, most read book in human history. Five to seven billion copies have been sold. The question is, how much do we read it? <laughs> The belief in the Roman Catholic Church probably came from Nehemiah 8, 7, and 8, which reads, The Levites instructed the people in the law while the people were standing there. They read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. Uh, the church still needs the gifts of pastor-teacher to preach and teach the scriptures, obviously. But with all the commentaries and study Bibles and guides that we have, uh, anybody can really drill down and understand the scriptures fairly well today with all that we have. Um, the Roman Catholic Church propagated the idea that only the priest could understand God's word. And it discouraged Catholics from seeing the importance of God's word and studying it for themselves. That's not true today. But this is when my dad was raised. The mass was crucial to the sacramental system. You earn grace to keep you out of purgatory through the sacraments. Consequently, the word of God was minimized and Holy Communion was what was important. My dad just would go to confession, go to communion, and he was good with God. But, um, and then when I would go to confession, I'd come away feeling like a, and communion, I'd feel like a much better person. Uh, not a forgiven person, 
better than people who hadn't been to communion and confession like me. It contributed to my self-righteousness, not the righteousness of Christ given to me in the waters of my baptism. And we were always late for Mass. Mom was a Lutheran, and we'd always get there right before the gospel and leave right after communion. My dad had to beat everybody to the bakery across the street to get the Danish that were there. But um, my dad and I had many, many conversations before he passed. Tremendous conversations about the difference between Catholicism and Lutheranism. Just that we're saved by grace through faith, not of works. It's a gift of God, lest anyone should boast about their works. So I believe dad understood that he was a sinner for sure. But he also understood at the time of his death that he could not earn heaven. That it was a gift received by faith that Martin Luther uh, made us all aware of. But I ask you this morning, do we come for communion and not God's word? Do we come for communion and not God's word? Like my dad, do we think we're okay as long as we take communion? Or does God's word have something to do with our sanctification as well? Now, most pastors everywhere will tell you that they have been uh, chided about the length of the sermon. And you know what it means when a pastor looks at the clock, don't you? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> so we got to get it in there. Now, you've been good about that. That has not been a big problem here at all. Martin Luther, in explaining the third commandment, thou shalt keep the Sabbath day holy, said that what God required of us with the third commandment was that we should hold preaching and the word of God sacred. He uses a number of scriptures to back this up. Scriptures like Isaiah 66 two. These are the ones I look on with favor, those who are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at my word. Acts 2.42, they, the believers, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and prayer and speaking of the local church to the local church at Colossae. In Colossians 3.16, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Jesus himself quoted scripture when tempted by the devil in the wilderness, did he not? He quoted Deuteronomy 8.3. When he was tempted to turn the stones into bread because he had fasted for 40 days, he comes back at Satan with the spoken word of God, which was written in Deuteronomy 8.3. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So if our spiritual lives are sustained by God's word, are we getting enough of it in our spiritual diet? Hopefully we are. The divine service for Lutherans is not simply a communion service, but a worship, a worship service of both word and sacrament. The question is, why wouldn't we want to hear God's word? One of the most beloved professors at Dallas Seminary, Prof. Hendricks, Dr. Howard Hendricks, is going to be with the Lord. Prophecy with known would always say, two things will last for eternity, people and God's word. So invest your lives in both. Do we understand that? Do we understand, as Isaiah said in Isaiah 40, verse 8, the grass withers and the flowers fail, but the word of our God endures forever. So knowing God's word will benefit us for all eternity. But know this as well, because it was written by God through men, we will never, ever plummet the depths of God's word. It has been written by an infinite creator, so its meaning is infinite and eternal. So don't get frustrated in your study, your memorizing, your praying, your reading it. It was written by God through men who were pulled along by God's Holy Spirit as they wrote it. Isaiah 55, 9 tells us, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. But verse 10, which I read, goes on to tell us, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose of for which I sent it. So even though we can't understand all of God's ways, we can trust that his word will work its purpose just like the rain and snow that come down from heaven do. They bring seed to the sower and bread for the eater. His word will not return empty 
or void. Notice what God says in verse 11. But my word will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. It will accomplish his desires and his purposes. It doesn't say our desires and our purposes. We may wonder why family or friends haven't responded positively to the gospel. But that's not up to us. It's up to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our job is to spread and scatter the word of God, the love of God, the love of Jesus. As we look at Jesus' teaching on the seed and the sower in Matthew 13, we get a glimpse about why those friends and family members might not respond to our attempts to share the gospel with them. Or we get a glimpse about why someone you know and love has walked away from the faith and how important it is that we try to reach them with God's word even still. One thing we must remember with this parable in Matthew 13 is that God gives the increase. We don't give the increase. He increases his fold. Paul told us that in 1 Corinthians 3, 7. He said, so neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. We don't cause God's kingdom to grow. God does, but the kingdom will not increase unless people hear about Jesus and what he did for them on the cross. Paul tells us in Romans 10, 14. How will then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? You say, well, that's what preachers do. You're right. That is what I do. But you're to do it as well. Remember, not all of us are preachers of evangelists. But God has called us to be witnesses for Christ. Acts 1, 8 tells us that when he's fed to the 120. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Witnesses just tell what they've seen, what they've experienced, what they've observed. So that's all God asks us to do. There isn't necessarily a formula that you have to use, a gospel track that you have to put in somebody's hand. Just tell them how God has blessed you or what God's doing in your life or has done for somebody else. That is a witness for Christ. Yes, it'd be great if they hear that salvation is a gift. And if you can get to that spot, wonderful. But remember, just help people take one step closer to Jesus. That's all we can do and respond in responding to the Holy Spirit's leading. We've received that power by the indwelling Holy Spirit. But do we use it? Let's face it, witnessing or talking about the, the Lord it's not easy for us. Oh my goodness, how many times have I wanted to say something and didn't? Yes, but God calls us here in Matthew 13, 1 through 9 to spread his word. What is interesting to me is that the parable is typically taught about the type of soil that we encounter when we try to share God's word. That's important for sure and helps us understand that there are distinct types of soil. There's hard, rocky, thorny, and good in all of these soils, the word of God can be either eaten by the birds, which is Satan, spring up early only to wilt in the heat of a trial or a temptation, be choked out by the cares of the world, or fall on good soil and produce a harvest 30, 60, or 100 fold. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you and me, what soil do we think we are? Times, I got to tell you, I've been all of them. There were times when I walked away from God's word. Satan came and snatched that word right from me. Times when I wilted in the midst of trials. Times when the cares of this world distracted me from God's word. You might feel the same way. Like you've been all those soils at times. The fact that you've continued in the faith tells me that you're good soil. And that's why you're here this morning. Do you still want to hear God's word and obey it? And I assume that's why you're here for sure. But one thing that is hard to do is to obey the command to go into all the world and share the gospel. Now many of us subscribe to St. Francis of Assisi's motto. Uh, preach the gospel at all times if necessary. Use words. But may I remind all of us again of Romans 14.10. How shall they hear without a preacher? But St. Francis has a point, doesn't he? If we don't live it, people will have a tough time believing what we preach or share. 
They will call us hypocrites, and trust me, younger generations think most of us are hypocrites. So it'll be necessary to heed Peter's words in 1 Peter 3.15. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Keeping a clear conscience. So that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. I believe Peter's saying, if we revere Christ as Lord, then our behavior will be in accordance with his will. People will see the difference and possibly ask us about the hope that we have inside of us. Matthew 13, I'd like to briefly focus on the one who spreads God's word, the sower. The New English translation tells us about the background to this well-known parable. It's a typical scene in the Palestinian countryside uh, where there is a field through which a well-worn path runs. Sowing would occur in late fall or early winter, October to December, in the rainy season, looking for sprouting in April or May and a June harvest. The use of seed as a figure for God's giving life has, has its roots in Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. But looking at the sower is interesting to me. That's what pricked my attention. When Jesus tells the crowd this parable, he begins with a sower or a farmer who simply scatters the seed or the word of God everywhere. The farmer doesn't have neat rows or a GPS tractor that he can read a book in while it does the rows perfectly like some of the farmers had in South Dakota when I was up there. Notice the sower simply keeps moving along. He doesn't seem to worry even about the type of soil he's throwing it on. If anything, he seems a bit careless. He doesn't plow the ground at all or add fertilizer to it. New Testament theology professor Donald H. Jewell comments, the farmer in our story is not overly cautious. He throws seed everywhere, apparently confident. There will be a harvest in spite of the losses. The farmer believes growth will come. Do we believe that our job is to simply spread God's word And God will give the increase. Or do we need to evaluate people? What type of soil they are before we share with them? Uh, They'd never believe in Jesus. I can't tell them anything about it. Is that our job? To assess people's openness or readiness? No, it isn't. Now, we might get clues as we talk a little bit that they're totally uninterested. And that's okay. We don't want to be jerks for Jesus as we attempt to share Christ with others. And so take your lead from the Spirit of God. We want all that's required of us is that we be found faithful as individuals and as a church to spread God's word however we can. A farmer, ragged and barefooted, was standing on the steps of his raggedy shack. A stranger stopped for a drink of water and he asked, How's your cotton coming along? Farmer, ain't got any. Stranger, did you plant any? Nope. Afraid of bull weevils. Well, how's your corn? Didn't plant any. Afraid there'd be no rain. Well, how are your potatoes? Ain't got any. Scared of the potato bugs. Really, what did you plant? Nothing. I just played it safe. Let's not play it safe anymore. Like the farmer, let's spread God's love through his word to any and everyone because the Lord desires that no one should perish. Let's go to all our neighbors, business associates, family members, and friends with his word, trusting that it will not return empty or void, but will bring others to Christ in saving faith. May the Lord use us to produce harvest of 30, 60, and a hundredfold. And all God's people said. Amen.
saying the Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. you. may be seated. At this time we will take our morning offering. Thank the Lord for the morning offering. Father, we are so grateful to you for our salvation that is freely given to us through faith in Christ alone. We can't get over that amazing grace, Lord. And this is just a small token of our appreciation 
We ask, Father, that you bless both the gift and the giver, that it may be used to your glory and honor here at our Saviors. And we ask it in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people said. Let's all stand. <clears throat> Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up our hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places. Offer thanks and praise to his holy name. And with the church on earth and the saints in heaven, join in their unending hymn. <clears throat> Holy, 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 my heart, my heart adores you. My heart is glad to say the words, you are holy God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we continue to bear our hearts and minds for the Lord's Supper, Join with me in consecrating this holy meal for the last time we gathered, we remembered when. <clears throat> On the night of his betrayal, our Lord took bread. He broke it as he blessed it, and then he said, My body given for you is what this means. Remember now, my children, what you have seen. And then he took the chalice and raised it high. My blood is given for you a full supply, a covenant, a promise, a cleansing stream. Remember now, my children, what you have seen. We share this meal together, remembering Christ. We share a common treasure and know the price. We share it without measure, a gift of love. We share our lives forever. Let's join hands together. Make sure everybody's joined with somebody. Very good, Debbie. Debbie, why don't you hook up with Mackie there? There we go. Great. Good, Bill. Let's say the prayer that the Lord Jesus Christ taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome at the table, as it is the Lord's table. Come now and receive the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Come now, the Father's arms are open wide, and there's room at the table for you.
Face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light. For our lives, may the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Amen. Thanks so much for worshiping with us this morning. The number of people weren't here. Give them a call if you think of them. How's Karen doing, Leo? You doing better? Good.
a little better. All right, we'll pray for Karen as well. Don't forget the Spalding family to pray for them. And for Sandy, if she doesn't exactly know what she's facing, I'll go see her this afternoon and pray with her and uh, Larry as well as he cares for her. But uh, always a pleasure to be with you on the beginning of our Sunday, the beginning of our week. Uh, never a burden, always a blessing uh, to hear from you. Never hesitate to call here at the office, my cell, or at home. It's a pleasure and a privilege to walk with you on your journey of faith and you with me and my family. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. God.